Hey guys, it's Webby and welcome back to another video. Um, today I'm making a video on this brand new BMW M3 Touring, which I've been driving this last week and I have to say it is a fantastic car. Um, you've probably read plenty of reviews or seen other videos about this car, um, but today I'm just going to give you my thoughts and opinions on what I think. Um, we'll have a look around the outside, obviously look at the inside and take it for a drive as well. Um, yeah, I have to say in the week I've been driving this, it's it's just been an absolute delight and a pleasure to drive. Um, you can drive it just normally like any other 3 Series basically, or you can dial it all the way up to 11 and um, yeah, it becomes a very, very different car. Um, so yeah, I'm going to give you my thoughts and opinions on the M3 Touring, and um, at the end of the video, let me know if you've got any questions. Uh, I'm sure there'll be plenty, because this car's been long awaited from BMW. From BMW. Um, it's actually been quite a long time coming. Because when you think about the likes of Audi and Mercedes, they've been doing high performance estates slash wagons, whatever you call them from where you're watching this video, uh, for a very long time. Um, you think back to probably 20 plus years ago when Audi started making fast estate cars. Um, so BMW finally caught up and now they're bringing us this M3 Touring. Um, so yeah, it's a long overdue car. Um, and yeah, you sort of hope it lives up to the hype. It certainly does as a driving package but we're gonna have a look at sort of boot space and you know the practical stuff as well. Um, so yeah, let's get started and have a look around the car uh, and show you a bit about the spec and all the details about this M3 Touring. Right, so starting off on the outside of the car, first of all, I think we've all got used to this one now, haven't we? That conversation's over. When it first came out with this new G-Series, um, obviously three series slash M3, everyone was saying, oh, it's ugly, it doesn't look very nice, you know, it's, it's hideous, all those sorts of comments. Um, I've actually got quite used to it now, to be fair. Um, you know, you started to see them on the roads and it becomes quite normal and it's not even a conversation really, but I sort of mention it. Um, I, say I quite like the design of this car. This particular color is called Daytona Violet. It's an individual color from BMW and here in Australia will set you back $7,500. So it's a very, very expensive option. But, I don't know, what do you think? Do you like it? Would you have it on your M3? Um, I actually think it suits the car really, really well. And when you see the interior, which is what they call silver stone, so it's a lighter color, I actually think the combination of the purple with the silver inside actually looks really, really smart. Um, it's, not it's not quite sort of Cadbury's purple, as some people might call it, um, but it is a seriously good looking color. Um, so yeah, so we've done the grill. Standard wheels, so 19 inch wheels at the front, 20 inch wheels at the back. Um, these are the bi-colour design, you can get them in just a full black finish as well. Um, but again, I think the silver of the wheels then sort of blends in with the silver of the interior, so I actually think it's quite a good combination. Under the bonnet of this M3, so you've got the 3 litre straight 6 twin turbo petrol engine, uh, four wheel drive um, to put all that power down to the road. And it's now got an 8 speed torque converter gearbox, whereas the previous generation had the 7 speed dual clutch. Um, I actually think that's slightly better because it makes it much more drivable in slow moving traffic um, or if you just sort of like parking or doing a U-turn or something like that. Um, it puts out 375 kilowatt and 650 newton meters of torque. So that's a serious powerhouse, this engine. Um, and like I say, you can just drive it in comfort mode. It's just like any other 3 Series. But when you put it in Sport Plus and dial everything up to 11, this becomes an absolutely different beast altogether. But general styling, you can see how the front guards are sort of pumped out to accommodate uh, these fat wheels at the front. You've got these dynamic aerodynamic mirrors, so you've got the air flowing through here on the sides of the wing mirrors. The bottom of the car, you've got these gloss black sections. That's a bit of a theme that BMW seem to be doing on their sort of M slash M light cars at the moment. It seems to have this black section down the bottom. I don't mind it on this colour because it doesn't really sort of show too much. I've had other cars recently, which are the, the light gray Brooklyn gray color. And the black sections really stand out, which I don't like personally, but um, everybody's different. Uh, so rear wheels are 20 inch front wheels and 19s. Um, it is four wheel drive, but um, if you look at the rear guards there, and the rear flares, those rear wheels really stick out. And it looks lowered, but it's actually not. It's, um, it's just how the car comes from standard. So overall opinion from the outside, I think it looks fantastic. So the side profile of this M3 Touring looks really, really good as well. I love how low it sits. The front sits slightly higher 
than the back wheels. I think the back wheels just sort of fill these wheel arches a bit better than the front ones do. It just gives it a real sort of squat appearance um, and looks very, very low to the ground. The good thing is though, it doesn't actually scrape out when you go and have a speed humps, um, which I was a little bit worried about when I first got the car. Um, I was worried about sort of scraping the front splitter and causing all sorts of problems. But yeah, thankfully it hasn't done that. Um, but yeah, styling wise, I think it's a really, really good looking car. It's almost like this is the missing model the BMW were always meant to make because yeah, Audi and Mercedes have done it for years. Um, you know, the RS4 and the RS6 have been really popular cars for, for Audi. So it's nice now that BMW have come along and done a more practical version of the M3. Um, so yeah, side profile I think is absolutely superb. And then when you come around to the back of the car, again, you can see those sort of rear haunches are really sort of flared out and pumped up over the regular sort of three series wagon. Um, and it just gives it a much more sort of aggressive appearance. The rear section of the car also down the bottom, um, look at these huge exhausts, four massive exhausts on the back and tells you this mean you know this car means business uh, and the massive diffuser there as well um i actually think this is one of the really it's a really good looking angle for this car a lot of all right let's have a look at the practicality of this m3 wagon then the tailgate is electric which you'd kind of expect on a car costing this much money One hundred eighty thousand dollars plus on road cost just in case you're wondering um so with all the taxes and bits and pieces you're tickling just over two hundred thousand dollars for this car here in Australia, uh, so it's not cheap. Um, anyway, I'm going to come and grab the camera and show you just how much space we got in the back. All right, so off the tripod. So it's actually not too bad. It's quite a decent space, and it's actually fairly square. There's not lots of intrusions, um, so you can see it's it's pretty decent amount there. Um, You've got a little roller blind that you can pull out there, obviously to cover the rear section up when you've got stuff in there that you don't want people to see. On the side here, we've got these two buttons which allow us to fold the seats down. So you just literally pull the button. That will then drop the seats down. And you can actually see you've got a decent amount of space there. So the length goes all the way from the back of the car, all the way there to the back of the front seats. So it's actually not too bad. You've probably got not quite two meters, but still a decent amount of space in there. Um, so yeah, it's actually quite practical when all, for, all the seats are folded down uh, and not too bad when the seats are in place. You don't get a spare wheel um, with this car. You've got a bit of storage under here, so you can put a few sort of knickknacks in there. And yeah, probably not very much to be fair, because it's not very deep. Uh, we've then got another little storage bin here, a little bit of storage down the side. Uh, first aid kit there so yeah not really much under boot storage but it's still a decent amount of space in there so that's the outside of the car done obviously looking at the practical side of things with the boot space uh, we're now going to jump inside and have a look at the inside of the car but before we do that if you've got any questions or comments for me uh, stick them in the comment section below uh, and i'll come back to you as soon as i can uh, if you're enjoying the video give it a like um, share it with your friends so they can see it as well uh, and obviously subscribe to the channel so that will tell you when the next video comes out. When I give this back, I'm actually picking up a BMW M2, uh, which I'm really, really looking forward to. That's definitely my cup of tea. Um, so yeah, I'll put a link to that video in the description of this one when that video goes out, which will be sometime sort of fairly soon as well. Um, so yeah, a couple of exciting cars and a couple of exciting videos. Um, anyway, let's get into the interior of this one. Uh, I can show you how fantastic the interior is in this uh, M3 Touring. Right, so let's go to the interior, have a look around. Keyless entry, obviously. A car this much money, you'd bloody well expect it. Um, first impressions, I love this interior. Uh, I really do like this silverstone and black two-tone combination. Uh, it just gives the interior a much sort of lighter appearance and looks very, very sort of luxurious as well. It starts off on the doors over here. Uh, so we've got this silverstone sort of leather over here on the door trims uh, the stitching up there which contrasts nicely uh, a fantastic harman kardon sound system so if you do like your music you'll be very impressed and pleased to hear that this is a very good sound system uh, so these are what i believe are to be the standard seats not the sort of the racy buckety ones where you get this sort of big lump here in the middle uh, these seats are really really comfortable 
Uh, down the bottom, we've got a good range of adjustment, uh, so fully electric. Uh, and this button here will actually adjust the side bolsters on the seat. Uh, so you can actually hold yourself in if you're doing a little bit of spirited driving. Um, the M logo actually lights up at night. And uh, so when you um, yeah, put your headlights on at night, that lights up, which is pretty cool. Uh, let's jump in and have a look around. So this is the view we get from the driver's seat. It's absolutely superb in here. Uh, I do love this steering wheel. It's sort of chunky, but the leather's nice and soft. Uh, you've got the red and the blue stitch in there. Obviously the BMW M colors, uh, the M logo there. Uh, the button for the heated steering wheel, which is very nice, obviously on cold mornings. You've got buttons there for things like your adaptive cruise control. Uh, over this side is like your audio, your phone, that type of thing there. We've then got the M1 and M2 buttons there, which you can customize um, to basically how you want the car to behave, uh, which is very, very cool. I've been playing about with those the last few days, so uh, yeah, they're good fun. The massive carbon fiber shift pedals there, which are really nice. Um, yeah, they've got a nice sort of texture on the back as well, and they're, they're a decent size, um, so you're not sort of missing them when you uh, try and change gears manually. So the display in front of the driver, so you can see how big that is. That's a, a nice sort of display. You can That changes with your driving modes as well. Uh, I'll actually start the car up. Jeez, how good does that sound? And that's just in the standard mode as well. So you can see there's plenty to see there on the dash. Um, you can say it tells you sort of what mode you're in. If you put the car into drive, you get the 1D over there on the right hand side. A little flick to the right and it puts that car into sport mode. We can then bring up things like the trip computer. Not that you necessarily worry about fuel consumption when you're buying a car like this. So that screen is absolutely huge. I would not want to have to pay to replace the glass on that. That would be mind boggling, I would imagine. Um, so then you've got the infotainment screen there that runs the newest version of iDrive um, and looks absolutely superb. Uh, my phone's actually connected to this via Apple CarPlay, which is wireless. Uh, so we've just got the little button there. How good does that look? That's running Waze at the moment. Um, so it's full screen, full full width of the display there for Waze, um, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, not sure whether we'll pick up, uh, not sure if you can see that. We also do get a head up display. Uh, so you can just about see that there in the middle of the screen, um, which is really nice as well. Get plenty of information on there. So yeah, so the actual cockpit is a really nice place to be. Uh, I also do like, you can just about make out the blue light there with the ambient lighting uh, on the dash in there just below the air vent there. That's a really nice feature as well, which obviously as it gets darker at night, you get to see quite nicely. There's plenty of carbon fiber sort of up here across the top of the dash, which is really, really nice. It's got a gloss carbon fiber look, which I do like. Uh, then this sort of satin silver trim which goes all the way across from one side of the other to the dash. Buttons down here are very minimal because everything is there on the touch screen, um, even your air conditioning. Uh, so you've got the climate control uh, buttons there built into the sat nav screen, which is actually quite easy to use. Um, it is quite fiddly to start with when you're setting stuff up, but once you've done your initial setup, it's actually quite easy to use. Um, if I just move that bottle there, we've got a little lid on the storage compartment there. So again, you've got a bit more carbon fiber, which does look really, really nice. It feels very high quality. Uh, it's such a lovely um, sort of finish to the interior. Uh, then we've got under there, uh, you've actually got a wireless phone charging pad plus a USB-A charging port and some cup holders and a 12 volt power socket. Uh, more carbon fiber around this center console section. Uh, obviously we've got our Gear shifter there, red start button, uh, that's the important one. Uh, controls over this side will operate with your iDrive system. And you've got the little wheel which you can write on top of and we'll see twist and push. Uh, we have also got buttons where you can turn off the, you know, choose which camera and the sensors and the button to turn for the stop start, which is, as most people, most people know, is rather annoying. Um, and just things where you can change the exhaust sound, you can set up your M modes, auto hold for the electric handbrake. Um, so it's all pretty standard stuff uh, if you've been in any BMW recently, particularly a 3 Series. But yeah, I have to say I do like this interior and even 
yeah it goes into the back all the leather is exactly the same we'll have a look at back in the back in a minute um, but yeah i can say these seats are superb um, underneath the armrest here lift that up we've got a bit more storage as well uh, we've also got a usb-c fast charging point in there which is actually quite handy um, although you've got wireless apple carplay um, if you wanted to charge a second phone you've obviously got a bit more space in there as well which is quite nice so the actual driving position then in this M3 Touring um, is really, really comfortable. And so these seats are absolutely superb. Um, you've got enough bolster in to sort of keep you in without sort of feeling too restricted. Um, the, min the front section actually, um, you can extend as well. So if you've got long legs, unlike me, um, then obviously, yeah, you can get a bit more under leg support as well. Um, so yeah, the steering wheel, some people might find it a little bit chunky. I actually quite like it. Um, there's plenty to sort of grip onto and um, yeah, it just feels nice to actually sort of hold in your hand. The actual visibility is really, really good. You've got plenty of um, sort of visibility out the front, decent side windows as well. Um, so all in all, it's just a lovely, uh, everyone says it's a lovely place to be, but it is, it's just such a nice interior in this car. Uh, it just feels such high quality. All the materials are nice. Every time you get into a BMW, which if anybody's you know, had the opportunity to do so, it's always got a particular smell. I think it's something to do with the leather. It's just got that BMW smell about it. Um, every time that BMW very kindly you know, lend me one of their cars, the first time I get in, it's like, oh yeah, it's, it's just got that BMW smell about it. I absolutely love it. Anyway, um, so that's where I'd have my driving position. Uh, let's have a look in the back now to see how much space we got and what features the rear passengers get. So the rear doors, as you can see, open nice and wide. The only thing you've got to remember is to sort of duck your head a little bit when you're getting in, because obviously the car's quite low to the ground. In terms of actually rear passenger space, these seats are sculpted slightly at the back, um, so you don't actually feel too restricted. This driving seat is actually in my position. I'm only five foot six. So if you had a six foot driver and a six foot passenger, you would definitely struggle. Uh, but someone sitting behind me would actually be okay. You do get a little bit of leg room down here um, in terms of where you can put your feet under the driver's seat. Uh, so that's good as well. And I love how the ambient lighting continues onto the rear doors as well. Um, plus also the leather, uh, which we had in the front door. And you find a lot of car manufacturers now put cheaper plastics in the back because obviously, you know, you're not always carrying people in the back of the car. But, um, but yeah, it's nice to see that the quality from the front continues into the back of this car. Uh, but again, you know, costing $200,000 or thereabouts, you may expect that. Now in the centre stack here in the middle, we've got some air vents. We've also got rear climate control buttons as well, which is nice to see. Um, so passengers in the back can actually have separate temperatures to those in the front. Uh, we've also got two USB-C fast charging points, um, handy for sort of kids in the back playing on phones and tablets and what have you. So we've got the traditional ISO fixed mounting points for child seats on the outer two seats. Uh, you've then got a fold down armrest here in the middle with a little button to pop out your cup holders. So that's all sort of like what you'd expect really. Um, so it's quite nice. The middle section for the seat has, has got a fold down section as well. So the rear seat is 40, 20, 40. So 40 being each side, 20 is the section in the middle. So you can still carry two passengers, but have longer items coming through from the boot if you just need that little bit of extra space. In terms of the general comfort though, it's really, really nice back here. One thing I do like, and it's on the seat belts, you actually got the red and the blue of the BMW M colors running on each seat belt, which I think is just a nice little touch. It just, just adds a little bit of something to the interior, I think, and makes you feel like you're in something a bit special. Um, and this is definitely a very special car. It might look to most people just like a regular three series wagon, but if you know what this car is, you know just how capable it is and just how impressive it is. Um, so the only thing we can really do now is take this thing for a drive um. Oh, 
that's pretty lucky actually. I don't know if you can see out the window. The weather outside is pretty horrendous. Uh, it's about to absolutely either chuck it down or well, there's a bit of sun coming the other way. Um, either way, it's getting windy and uh, possibly a little bit wet outside. Uh, anyway, let's take it for a drive. Foot on the brake, press the red start button and she comes to life. Um, that sound is definitely piped into the speakers because when I was outside just re-watching the video of the exhaust, yeah, it sounds very different on the outside to the inside, so uh, there's a little bit of fakery going on. Either way, sounds pretty good. Um, probably sounds better on the inside than it does on the outside, uh, at least at standstill. Anyway, let's go for a drive. Uh, so we just start off in standard mode. It's all very nice and comfortable because it's one of those cars that it's kind of a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde. You don't have to absolutely drive the wheels off of it to make it sort of handle and drive properly. You can just drive it like a regular BMW or any other sort of car for that matter and it behaves superbly. A lot of cars of this type that are sort of high performance, the suspension's really hard and you've, you notice it over every sort of bump and lump in the road, but actually this is pretty compliant. Um, particularly in the fact you've got 19 and 20 inch wheels underneath here and pretty low profile rubber too. When it changes gear as you're driving along, you can hear a little sort of pop from the exhaust. It sounds quite nice. It's not kind of obnoxious like some cars are these days. It's kind of, it's there, but you, you know, it's sort of subtle. But if you listen out for it, you can hear the, uh, the exhaust popping away. When I mentioned to a few friends that I was getting this car, they were like, oh, take me out, take me out, you know, let, no, bring it around and show me. I think there's a lot of anticipation around this car, um, other than the fact that it's an M3, because, you know, it's, a, it's an iconic car for BMW, and, and in general, it's, um, you know, the M3 kind of is a benchmark car for that type of vehicle. So, yeah, when I told a few people I was getting an M3 Touring for the week, there was uh, plenty of, oh, yeah, bring it around and show me, and uh, can I have a drive? The answer to... Can you bring a man to show me was a positive yes. But yeah, people that wanted a drive got a sad no, unfortunately, because uh, yeah, BMW have lent me this car for the week, so I'm kind of looking after it for them very well. I don't want to uh, get into any trouble. In terms of road noise, you get a little bit, whether that's from the tyres themselves um, or just the road surface. Um, here in Melbourne, it could quite be the road surface, to be fair, because oh, most places there's roadworks and bits and pieces going on. Um, Comes standard with Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's, so decent tyres. Um, I'm quite a fan of those myself. It's very relaxing to actually drive this car just normally like any other car. Um, yeah, you don't sort of feel the need to drive it hard because it just behaves quite, quite normally, if you like which is nice because, um, yeah, you want to just be able to use it as your, your daily driver. But then when you want to have a bit of fun, yeah, you can put it in sports mode or press one of these M buttons on the steering wheel and, uh, yeah, it becomes a very different beast when you do that. So just for recording purposes, I've just popped it into the M2 button here on the steering wheel, which has got basically everything dialed up to sport and sport plus. I don't know how well that noise comes through on the video. You can definitely feel the noise here in the cabin in the car. And um, oh, that's nice. You can hear the little burbles of the overrun of the exhaust. Yeah, that's pretty addictive, actually. You're meant to be able to get just under 11 litres per 100 kilometres in terms of fuel consumption out of this car. But it's one of those cars that I don't really think you sort of look at that, or well, you shouldn't. You should own this car and just go and drive it and have some fun, um, because that's really, you know, one of its main purposes. But, um, yeah, I can't see you getting anywhere close to it when you've got this much fun under your right foot. 
something I do quite like about the SM3 Touring is it's pretty understated. Unless you really know what you're looking for, to the untrained eye, this is just a regular 3 Series wagon. Until you see the massive wheels under the, the wheel arches and how wide the stance is, particularly at the back of the car. Like I say, to the untrained eye, they wouldn't necessarily know that this is something special. Putting everything into sort of the lowest setting, like efficient and comfort and that type of thing, aren't necessarily words you'd sort of associate with an M3 because you'd just think it's all about you know, driving fast. But it just goes to show the breadth of ability of this car, and it can be an everyday driver. But at the same time, you know, dialing up to 11 is very, very different, and you can you know, do some decent lap times around your favourite racetrack. Unsurprisingly, this gathers pace really, really easily. You've only got to squeeze the throttle and, yeah, you see the speedo numbers going up pretty quick. But it's effortless. There's no kind of... It doesn't feel like it's putting in any effort to go quickly. Um, which I guess you could say is not necessarily a downside, but you've just got to be careful because they could be easily going over the speed limit. And, um, yeah adding a few points to your license. So there you go, that's the video of the brand new BMW M3 Touring. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I've had an absolutely fantastic week with this car, so massive thanks to BMW Australia for lending it to me. Uh, so I'm giving it back, I'm picking up an M2, so it's not the end of the world. That video is coming soon too. If you have enjoyed the video, give it a like, share it to your friends, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell to find out when the next video goes live. Um, so that just leaves me to say thank you for watching. If you've got any comments or questions, leave them down below for me. I will see you in the next video very, very soon.